Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gerben from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 133, Sum the Top Two That Match Criteria. All right, question from Joe JG at YouTube. Wants to be able to sum the top two values from this range, but only the ones that match this criteria. All right, so I'm going to go old school here. Select the range, Data, Filter, Advanced Filter, we're going to copy to another location. The criteria range are these six cells right here. And we're going to copy it to there. Click OK. All right, so now that extracted range are only the matching records. And then what is it? It's equal max. Uh, this We'll select a whole bunch of cells here because you don't know how many records we're going to get. Plus, the second largest value is large of that same range, comma 2. There we go, 95, which is the required answer. Of course, this method works great right now, but if any of the criteria change, uh, we got to go back and start all over again. But Mike has something better than that. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, I got to tell you, you know, this kind of uh, problem here, you know, as I see it, has a bunch of array calculations. It's going to get pretty complicated. This is totally awesome. Advanced filter based on that criteria, and then max plus large, too. Got to love it, especially if this data set is just a static data set. It's not going to change, and that two's not going to change either. All right, um, so the large function, uh, why don't we take a look at that? It needs an array. But if I highlight this column right here, I really don't want all the numbers. I want just the ones that match these three criteria. So I'm going to build an array calculation here. Now I'll start with the if. See if anything in here is equal to that month there, comma. Now I need the value of true, but there's still more conditions. So you put another if, nesting it. So anything in this column equals to that, comma. There's still another condition. So if value of true, we have to put a third if. Anything in there equal to this year, comma. And now we can put the value if true. These are three array calculations all in a row. They will deliver trues and falses only where there's a true, a true, and a true. Will it pick out from this column of numbers? Now, the if function, if you have an array calculation in the logical test, it doesn't matter where the rest of the formula is sitting or what other function is on the outside of the if. It will require Control-Shift-Enter. All right, so I'm going to close this off. One, two, three. I'm watching the screen tip. And finally, I guess I still need another one. I typed a 0. So there, I see it. I'm back to the large, so I type a comma and then Oh, wait a second. I don't want 2, because that would just give me the second largest. I'm going to do another array calculation using an array constant, 1, comma, 2 in curly brackets. That's a, that says, hey, large, give me 1 and 2 largest. So then I'm going to close off the large. Now if I highlight this, we'll see that the large will deliver two values. I'll hit F9. Boom, there it is, Control-Z. Now I can put it. You know what? It, what would happen if I put it in some product? Forget it. I would still have to use Control-Shift-Enter. Watch this. Remember, the trump rule for the if is any uh, array calculation and logical test, forget it. It doesn't matter what functions on the outside. When I Number hit Enter, seven. it's not going to work. If I do Control-Shift-Enter, we get our 95. But here's the deal. I had to turn off uh, Speak on Enter. Let's be unambiguous here. In case someone else is looking at it and they're thinking, I know some product doesn't require Control-Shift-Enter, let's not give them the chance to think that. Let's put some. Then we're looking at this, we know, oh, we need to do Control-Shift-Enter. When you do Control-Shift-Enter, you're saying, hey, formula, uh, Excel, I'm doing an array formula. You can see up in the uh, formula bar, those curly brackets, that's Excel telling you, yes, I understood that that's an array operation. Now, we could amend this because copy, escape. What if we didn't? Uh, or we wanted this to be variable too? Well, we'd have to get a little tricky here. Now, let me click uh, Control-Shift-Enter and just come off to the side. I'm going to use the indirect function. And I'm going to build that array constant, but it will be dynamic. In double quotes, I'm going to say 1 colon. N double quotes, so that colon tells that we're going tells us we're going from row number one 
row number one to some other row. I'll use ampersand the join. And from right now, it's from one to two. Now, indirect is programmed to take a reference that's text. If I F9, you can see it's text there, and convert it to an actual reference. When I highlight this in F9, it won't let me because row one to two has too many references in it. But no problem. We can tell the row function to look at that and tell me how many rows. Well, there's only two, one and two. So I highlight this in F9. There it is. Now I'm going to Control Shift Enter and change this to three. And now if we come down here and highlight it in F9, you can see, wow, that is cool. It's a dynamic array constant. But this is an array formula here. There's uh, inside the row. So I'm going to copy this, come over here, and highlight just that little bit and Control V. Now there's a bunch of array calculations. One, two, three. The if is making a fourth, and then the in the row is making another one. That's a lot of array operations. Control Shift Enter. And now I can see that that is working. If I change this back to two, there is still one other way we could do this. If I can only copy and paste fast enough, I'm going to Control CC to copy and load it into the clipboard. I'm going to Control C. I'm going to Control C, Control C, and Control C. If we really didn't want to do Control Shift Enter, we could Ooh. avoid the if and come over and inside of some product do the large. But we're going to have to build the array with um, multiplication. So I'm going to say there's the first condition, close parentheses, time, open parentheses, and just build it with the three conditions using Boolean multiplying, true times true times true. And then what do we want? We want this array right here. So that's inside the array argument of large. Now I can do comma and paste this. That'll be our dynamic k, creating a dynamic array constant. Close parentheses on the large, close parentheses on the sum product. And because we're not using the if, we're using Boolean multiplying, enter. And so now if I change this right here, Boom, back to two. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, Mike, all right, that is good. Out of those three formulas, I like the second one, the sum with large, and then the three if statements inside. Seems easier to me, uh, at least uh, as easy as it uh, could be with these array formulas. If, for those of you watching, if you'd like to get really good at array formulas, you need to check out Mike's new book, Control Shift Enter. Uh, it, on Friday, the 25th, it should be hitting the first of the Amazon Distribution Center. So it's shipped from Chicago on Tuesday. That means on Thursday they'll get it down in Kentucky, uh, and it should be for sale today uh, at Amazon, at least if you're in the center of the country. If you're further out at one of the other distribution centers, that might take a couple more days, but go ahead and order it. They will uh, ship it to you as soon as it hits your local distribution center. What a great book covering Excel array formulas. All right, well, hey, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun.